Hello, everyone, and welcome to the College Tracker Show. I see you coming into the Zoom room, and hello to everyone that's currently watching via live stream. Today, we have Rochester Institute of Technology with us, and so we're going to get right into it, and we're going to start with just an introduction for my special guest today. So, Mark, I'll start with you. Hi, everyone. My name is Mark Munzer, and I'm one of the senior associate directors of admission. Um, I'm also an alumnus of RIT, and I've been working in admissions for just over 20 years. Um, I'm originally from Syracuse, New York, and I am the official Canadian representative. So welcome, everyone. We're glad you could join us. Thank you. Hannah? Hi, my name's Hannah. I'm from Owen Sound, Ontario, Canada. I'm in my undergraduate degree here doing psychology, and I also play for the women's ice hockey team. And I'm a senior. Nice. Sarah? Hi, my name is Sarah Coe. I'm a sophomore. Um, I'm a business major, and I'm from Whitby, Ontario, Canada. All right. Elijah? <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I'm Elijah Gonzalez. I, uh, I play on the men's team here at RIT. It's my fourth year. I study finance, and I'm from Toronto, Ontario. Thank you. Coach Celeste? Good evening, everyone. My name is Celeste Brown. I'm the women's ice hockey head coach. Um, I am also an alumnus of RIT from the sociology and anthropology um, department. So super excited to have you on and teach you a little bit about RIT. Thank you. And Coach Brian. Yes, um, Coach Hills. I'm with the men's hockey team and uh, been here 17 years. Uh, we started in uh, Division one hockey back in 2005, and that's when I came on board here. And I'm from Windsor, Ontario. Excellent. Thank you for that introduction, everyone. So as you can see, we have a full group here, okay, from RIT. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, so you'll notice on your, those that are in the Zoom room. So if you tap your screen, you'll see the Q&A box. So if you have any questions, you want to make sure that you write it in there, okay? And then those watching via live stream, as always, write your questions in the comment section and we will ask the guests for you. So we are going to get started and I'll hand it over to Mark. Thanks so much, Victoria. Um, so I'm gonna start by asking a few questions of the students on the call and then a couple of questions of the coaches as well. And then we'll get to a full presentation about RIT so you can learn a little bit more about the university and then we'll have time for your questions at the end. Um, so I'm gonna start with Hannah. And I'll ask the same question of all three of you. Can you describe what your university search was like um, and include any information that you want about it, uh, including what it was like to be recruited as a student athlete? Yeah, so I was recruited to RIT um, my senior year of high school. Um, I was kind of just reaching out to all types of schools in Canada and in the States. Um, I guess I was, I was playing in my, for, my junior team in Cambridge, Ontario. So yeah, I don't know. I just got recruited um, October of my senior year of high school and came to RIT the following fall. And I, for I forgot the second part of my question. Um, so I'll follow up with that. Why, why did you ultimately pick RIT? Uh, I picked RIT because of the facilities and the academics. The facilities we have here are amazing. And then along with the academics, um, I actually came in undeclared, but I knew whatever I was going to choose was going to be ultimately a great choice due to the high academic levels we have. Thank you. Sarah, I'll ask the same question of you. Yeah, so I was reaching out to a bunch of schools in the States and Canada as well. Um, when it came down to it, I was deciding between a school in Ontario and RIT, and I ultimately chose RIT because of um, the opportunities and the facilities as well as Hannah, but ultimately because of the co-op. Um, RIT has a great co-op program, program. And so that was what really was kind of the deciding factor for me. Great, thank you. Elijah. <clears throat> uh, for me, I fell in love with the campus the moment I stepped foot on it. I was uh, same situation as Hannah, senior year of high school. Uh, Coach Hills actually reached out to me when I was playing junior in Ontario. and. When I came here, I fell in love with it right away. And like they said as well, what the school offers academically and 
uh, due to sports is just it's pretty much second to none in my opinion. So great, thank you. So my next question is about your, especially about your first year at RIT. Um, what was that like for you? Um, did anything surprise you or challenging challenge you in an unexpected way? And if you could describe too what kind of a day in life is like for a student athlete. Hannah, I'll start with you again. Yeah, um, I guess I came in with a really big class. So I knew there was gonna be tons of support and a bunch of girls coming in from the same um, experiences that I had. And just being a big freshman class, it was nice to know that girls are in the same position as me. Um, academic wise, like I said, I didn't know what I was gonna take. So I was kind of surprised by all these different courses I was trying out to see what I found interest in. Um, and then I guess the day in, in the life, we get up really early for practice. <laughs> so we start off at the rink. And then once we get going in the morning, um, I have a couple classes and then I don't, I don't have any night classes. So I usually get my homework done in the night and then get to bed early for early morning practice. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, so um, I'm a second year. So first year was last year for me. And so um, coming off of like a year of COVID, it was nice to kind of get back into the full swing of things. And then um, kind of like Hannah, just balancing and learning um, how to balance classes with the demanding hockey schedule as well, I think was a big adjustment, but you get pick, pick up the hang of it pretty well. Um, and you kind of adjust pretty well. And then my day-to-day -day life is pretty much the same as Hannah's. Uh, early morning practice and then uh, classes. And then I also work as well. So throwing work in there as well. Thank you, Elijah. <clears throat> uh, my first year was pretty smooth sailing. I, I was lucky where hockey side of things, everything was going really smoothly. I'd say the biggest adjustment was just kind of living on your own and realizing what you'd have to do day in and day out, whether it was deciding what I'm doing for dinner, or breakfast, this and that. Class schedule side of things, my first year, more often than not, you get the early classes. So I had, I'm pretty sure, a good amount of 8 or 9 a.m. classes, which I didn't mind too much, but it's not everyone's uh, forte. But yeah, it was pretty smooth uh, sailing my freshman year. Great. So my last question to each of you is, um, you know, the, a lot of our audience today are current high school students, and they may be looking ahead to a potentially a U.S. university, potentially being a student athlete. What advice would you give to them as they're kind of navigating um, the choices that they have coming up? Anything you wish you had known going through the process yourself? I guess I would just say to put yourself out there as much as you can. Um, email all the coaches at the schools you're interested in. Um, maybe provide them some locations you're going to be playing. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for me. All right, thanks. Sarah? Um, I would just say to do a lot of research. Um, I know before like I made my final decision, I kind of knew exactly what I was getting myself into, whether it was academics and hockey, and I just made sure that I asked all the questions that I needed answers to, and I think just asking all the questions that you have is really important. Great, thank you. Elijah? Um, honestly, I feel like looking back on it, I would just say to enjoy it, enjoy the process of looking for where to go and spend your next four years because it might be really stressful and you might be kind of flustered of what you want to do or you don't know what you want to do, but I mean, none of us did. So it's uh, enjoy the process. It's, it's fun looking back on it now. Thank you. All right. So we're going to turn to the coaches and uh, we'll start with you, Celeste. Um, could you share with our audience what you want them to know about your program, about the culture of the team, um, about your conference, and um, you both share athletic facilities. So maybe talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mark. Um, so what would I want you to know about RIT women's hockey? All right. So it is important for you to know that we're a division one school. Okay. And there's also some important keys there that have changed where we can now offer athletic scholarships. And that's a big piece to, to all of this. Um, we play in a conference called college hockey America, and that consists of Syracuse, 
Lindenwood University out in St. Louis, Penn State, um, and girls who am I missing? I'm missing one. I put them uh, on the spot. I Syracuse, can't remember. Syracuse, I, Penn State, Mercy Hurst. Mercy Hurst. Okay. Um, and so that's where our conference is. We generally are close in travel, so around four hours on the weekends. Uh, we also have the availability to travel um, anywhere in the country to play teams, whether that be in Minnesota or into the Northeast and playing Boston teams, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so a ton of support from our university to play, um, play anyone that we feel fit um, to do so. The when we talk about culture and we talk about um, the academics, the other parts that go into what we're doing, um, I can sum it up into sort of three categories, meaning we're looking for leaders to come into our program that um, act with like integrity out in their worlds. And so when we go out and recruit, not only do we watch and see if you fit from a hockey standpoint, but we do our research in terms of who you are as a human being um, and how that would fit into what we're trying to push here. Um, from there, we We'll take a look at your academics and what we found in in the history is that usually our students that are better students are better hockey players at the same time, meaning that there's very similar categories of how you manage your time, how you're diligent about what you're doing, your attention to detail, and how all that goes into both on the ice and off the ice. Um, Lastly, the other thing is that we have a pretty unbelievable um, setup for uh, women's and men's ice hockey at RIT, meaning we're the only Division I sport on campus. Uh, we have other sports, they're Division Three, and so we we have a really fun environment to play in. And so all of our student athletes have alluded to the the um, the resources and the facilities, but not only that is that we have a community around hockey that's really, really unique and creates a fun space. So we're not um, we're not competing with big football teams. It is like hockey is the sport on campus. And so you see people walking around with hockey jerseys. You see people noticing our student athletes around campus and telling them, hey, nice goal on Friday night or whatever that may be. And I think that's a really, really special piece to what we're doing. And then lastly, I'll just touch on it is that all of our student athletes athletes um, after they're done with their college or their hockey career leave here with um, the ability to go and and use their degree and thoroughly use their degree into whatever field that they may want and um, for Canadians it's also a um, a school that is recognized and the RIT degree is useful back in your your country. So that's that's a little bit about our program, our conference, and and what I'd like you to know. Thank you so much. Brian, same questions to you. Okay. Can you repeat the question there, Mark? I, sure. Absolutely. Kind of what would you like? Yeah, what would you like the audience to know about your program, your conference, the, the culture of your team? And anything else you wanted to add to what's less said about facilities available to the players? Deal. Well, first of all, our, our conference is uh, basically in the east, uh, just to the west of us. We have Niagara University, Canisius College, Mercyhurst, uh, Robert Morris University in Pennsylvania be coming back in next year. And then to the east of us, we have Army, Bentley, um, Sacred Heart, Holy Cross, uh and in the far southwest we have air force so we get to we get to go out there uh, uh usually once a year at least two out of three years that we we travel out to colorado to play them and uh, we've had a great deal of success over the years in our conference uh we've I think, won four regular season titles won three playoff titles we went to the frozen four in 2010 and uh uh so we've we've had a pretty good run and right now you know, we really like the team that we have this year and we're in, we're in first place right now and uh, in for a first place battle this weekend with Sacred Heart. So, so we're real excited about where the program has been and where it's going right now too. Uh, as far as looking for players, uh, people ask you that all the time. What do you look for? And uh, the first thing is when you, when you go into a rink, you're looking for the very best players. Um, and if you find someone you like, you're looking, you're finding out whether 
they're real good students. And then like Celeste said, you're finding out whether they're real good people, basically. Uh, I call it the trifecta. When you hit all three, then it's game on. We're going to recruit you, just like I did with young Elijah Gonzalez here back uh, a few years ago. Right, Elijah? So, but uh, I think it's it's important, um, obviously, you know, to be a good student but and be a good player, but you have to be a great teammate at the end of the day. That's 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 how teams win. And uh, so if you, we if we find out in the recruiting process that there's been some issues off ice uh, with students, then we just kind of move on. So to all the students out there, just again, be a good person uh, wherever you wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And, you know, at RIT, uh, the other selling point, the big selling point is you're going to get a great education. And our program has turned out guys who've been engineers, doctors, uh, been very successful in the, in the, in the business world and finance. Uh, we guarantee you that if you finish your four years here, you're going to get a great education. And we've had a number of guys go on to do their master's uh, MBAs here too. Uh, so I think that's that's a sign of you know how much the kids do like it, like it at RIT. So, um, and then as far as where we go to look for players, we look all across North America, uh, and uh, that means we cover all the top junior leagues in Canada and the U.S. And uh, you know, there's no certain leagues that we like better than others. We just try to you know, cover them all and find, like I said, you know, earlier, we try to find the very best players that, that you know, we think are going to be a good fit for our team. Great. Thanks so much. Um, my next question to both of you is, is I think a burning question for a lot of our audience members is how do I get noticed? How do I get recruited? What's kind of my next step um, if I'm interested in your team? Um, and you can answer this specifically for your team or in a general sense, uh, for division one or both and we'll start with celeste again yeah so i'll just speak generally um meaning it's important uh i'll speak to the women's side of course but it's different than the men's side so um we have a timeline of contact meaning we can contact uh like prospective student athletes june 15th between their sophomore and junior year of high school um prior to that we are paying attention and watching you in arenas um as i believe hannah said um and all of them said there's a process to this so um when you reach out or you email those emails get um get read, they may not get replied to, but that's due to our rules and the NCAA rules, um, at least until a certain point. But that doesn't mean that we aren't tracking you. Um, we we believe like the hockey world is smaller than you think. So um, our worlds are made up of networks that are constantly talking and chatting. And so not only are we consistently on the road at, at many different events all over the country and all over Canada. Um, we, we have people that call us and are saying, hey, check out this player. Um, the, the best thing you can do is, like I said, to Hannah's point, email, but be organized in those emails. Let us know what year you're graduating. Um, be do your research in terms of what you want to do and what type of school you want to go to that's important um do they have the major that you're interested in also be specific of like what tournaments you're playing in what number jersey you're wearing and go from there and then i think each individual school hits different categories of what they're looking for for that class and that's also important to keep in mind is that each school is approaching each class that they're recruiting differently. Um, and <clears throat> to always feel as if there's someone in the rink or someone watching. So with the amount of video now, um, there might not even be anyone inside your arena watching you play, but we could be recruiting from afar. And so it's important to always like, um, step on that ice and be the best version of yourself when you go out there. And that doesn't mean you can't have a bad day or a bad game, but it does mean that um, sort of just similar to what Coach Hills is saying, your attitude and how you um, react and how you present yourself is important at all times. Great. Thank you. Brian, same question. 
Yeah, I, uh, and again on the uh, on the on the men's side, uh, you know, again, like I mentioned earlier, we're covering all of the different junior leagues all across North America. Uh, our school at our school, we don't cover a lot of the U eighteen or U sixteen hockey. We'll do a little bit near the end of the year, uh, but for some of the for some other schools, maybe that you know those games are more important to them. Uh, we don't really recruit a lot of 16, 17 year old players, so to say. We want to wait until we can see more of the what the finished product is going to look like. Uh, so we're looking at the 18, 19, 20 year olds. That doesn't mean we don't look at all again to say at, at the 16, 17 year old. We will look at them, uh, but you know we like to take our time. We do a great job in the provinces of Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia. Uh, and we also cover the what's called the North American League and the USHL really hard, the two top junior leagues in the U.S. And uh, if you're good, we're going to find you. Uh, that's that's the way we look at it. But when you're if you're in high school right now, if you're not playing junior hockey, you want to get to one of those top leagues uh, in those in 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 those provinces. Uh, and, you know, and people may look at, oh, geez, uh, I'm in uh, Manitoba or Saskatchewan, uh, man, you know, should I be playing in, in, in the U.S. in the North American League? Should I be playing in British Columbia? And, and that's all a personal choice. You have to figure that out for yourself. Uh, we've got players from all the, like I said, all the different leagues. Uh, probably it's, we don't have anyone I think, from Saskatchewan at the moment, but we've had players from Saskatchewan. We've got two players from Manitoba right now. We've got a few from Alberta, from from BC, a number from Ontario. Uh, we also have uh, probably four or five from, from Quebec, uh, too. So uh, again, we cover it all. We, you know, if you're good, we'll find you. But like Celeste said, you want to reach out to uh, to coaches. Maybe send uh, a three to four minute highlight uh, video of you know video clips of you, uh, and not just scoring goals or or blocking you know, or or, or or getting assists, you want to you know show some clips of good defensive play, working hard, that sort of thing. And uh, don't overload the coaches with it. Like I say, three to four minutes is more than enough. And the other way we find uh, players is, uh, as Celeste said, you know we all have our our networks in the hockey world, and somebody will call us up, and uh, maybe they're out in Vancouver, British Columbia, and they say, hey, I've got this really hot prospect, and you fly out next week and see him. Well, we can't always jump on a plane instantly and. <laughs> fly, uh, you know, make a seven, eight, nine hour trip to, to get out there. Uh, but we have what's called Instat and we can look, uh, watch players on that. And uh, and then if we do really like that player on Instat, uh, watch their shifts and their play on there, then you know, we might book a flight in another week or two to watch them live. Because in in uh, probably 90% of the cases, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see you play live at least three to five times uh, as a staff. Okay. And, uh, and I think that's, you know, again, as Celeste mentioned, you know, you know, make sure you're ready to play every game, basically, because you never know who's watching you, uh, whether it's live or on Instat. And, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, it's again, with with the computer world, uh, you never know, don't uh, try not to act up on the ice. And, uh, we've even seen, you know, cases where we've seen bad body language on a player. And, you know, that turns us off too. that may be that uh, that thing that we're looking at and saying, oh, geez, he doesn't have a you know great attitude when things uh, don't go well. So, uh, you know, play your heart out all the time. And uh, if you're good enough, you'll make it. Great. Thanks so much. One last question for both of you. You were both college student athletes once upon a time, and you've uh, mentored and coached um, many young people over your careers. What advice do you have for student athletes at the university level um, to be successful, um, you know, in balancing that academics and athletics? What words of wisdom do you have to share with our audience today? Um, that's a great question, Mark. And the first thing that comes to mind is just to trust the process, because I think each year of your college experience is different, meaning you're, you ask the, all the student athletes about their first year, and I'm sure if you ask them the same question, you know, what's 
what's something you're you're learning about your last year would be a different answer and um during your college years there's there's massive growth in who you are as a human who you are as an athlete who you are as a student and with that growth comes adversity and that's just to be expected. Um, but there's, there's part of that. That's also like trust the part process, but enjoy the process. And I always say this is like hockey. Um, we started playing hockey because it's fun and that's how it should stay. Meaning, um, there's hard work with fun, et cetera, et cetera, but you should still be enjoying what you're doing all the way through your, your college experience. So trust the process, have fun and always work hard. Thank you. Brian. Yeah, and uh, I think time management is probably, you know, the biggest thing, uh, to, to be able to manage not only your, 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 your class load, your homework, that sort of thing, but also the practice time. And, uh, and you know, the part that goes hand in hand with, with you know, is just going to class, period. <laughs> you know, it's easy, oh, geez, I don't feel great this morning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip my 8 a.m. class, sleep in a little and, you know, try to feel better. And I always tell, you know, tell people, you know, students, student athletes that going to class is half the battle. If you attend every single class, you're probably going to be in pretty good shape. And uh, especially at a school like RIT, where classrooms, the average classroom size is 35 or less, the professors take notice of who's there and who's not there. And if someone shows up on a regular basis and it comes to at the end of the semester, it's a you know grade a B plus and you, you feel like you should have an A and you go argue with the professor maybe a little bit uh, after he's given you the, the grade and you know, he says, geez, you know what, that, you know, that kid showed up every day. He was, you know, the first kid in class in the mornings. And, uh, you know, so, hey, well, he's got a good point. He was, he was on the, on the borderline of an A and I'm going to give him the A. Whereas the person who skips out of class might, might not get the benefit of the doubt and just ends up getting the B plus. Uh, so, you know, again, it comes back to, you know, be the good person, be the good teammate uh, in the classroom and on your team. And and just be willing to put in the extra hours of of study time, uh, you know, at night and sometimes and uh, you know I stay late in the office sometimes on Wednesdays and Thursdays and it's not unusual for me to see you know two or three guys in our uh, in our lounge area you know working on projects or you know doing some extra study and when it's you know when it is exam time uh, so you know I think that's you know that's really important. And uh, just like anything else, uh, the, as a as a as an athlete in college, you also have to put in extra time. You know whether it's before practice, after practice, in the gym. So you have to be dedicated to that. And again, it all comes back to the time management part of it. And then rely on your coaches. Uh, you know if you're struggling with something, if you're struggling with the way you're playing, talk to the coaches. There, uh, you know, it's always an open door policy. Uh, in our office, as, as Elijah knows, and uh, sometimes they sometimes they might tell you what you want to hear, and sometimes they might not. They might tell you what you don't want to hear. Uh, but uh, I think most coaches are very honest and upfront. And uh, and then if you're just having you know some other issues that you, you know, I mean, uh, everyone you, you know, there's mental health things too. Just you know, talking to someone about you know what is going on, you know whether it's on the ice or off the ice, or maybe it's back home uh, with a family member, that sort of thing. So uh, always understand that the coaches are there for you for that too. Great, thank you so much. Celeste, you've inspired me. I'm gonna ask a follow-up question to Hannah and Elijah because they're both graduating. What is next for both of you? What, what, what are your hopes, aspirations in the next chapter after this year? I don't really know yet. <laughs> it's kind of up in the air and I don't know, every week it's different <laughs> of what I want to do, but um, I'm really interested in psychology. So I'll probably go down that route some point, <laughs> whether it's next year or the year after. Um, hockey wise, I'm not sure. Um, we do have actually have eligibility, but that's also up in the air. So I don't know. <laughs> It's only November, right? You still yeah, have lots of time to figure months. things out. <laughs> Taking it day by day. <laughs> All right, thanks. What about you, Elijah? Uh, for me personally, being here through COVID, I got an extra year of eligibility. So I'm going to exercise that next year and, and get uh, my MBA at the school year. So 
I'm excited for that. Get to prolong the college career, which is awesome. After that, I'll probably try and pursue professional hockey. I think that'll be an option for me. All right. Good luck in all those pursuits. All right. I want to thank all of you very much for all the really helpful and insightful information. Um, I think most of you are able to stay until the Q&A, but I'm going to now share my screen and share with our audience some of the highlights about RIT. And um, let's see here. Let me just get set up. And I want to invite our audience to reach out to me if you wanna be connected with any of our panelists today um, and we can help answer your questions. So we heard a little bit about the division one or a lot about division one hockey at RIT, but uh, some of you may be aspiring athletes in other sports. And so we do have many division three teams as Celeste mentioned, um, including our lacrosse team that has won back-to-back -back national championships the past two years. Um, our women's soccer team happens to be in the NCAA tournament this weekend, and we have many other successful teams listed here as well. They compete in the Liberty League, um, which is consists of many, uh, mostly upstate New York colleges and universities, so very drivable in most cases for their conference uh, matchups. And they all have different levels of competitiveness in terms of being recruited. Some of them have uh, open tryouts, some do not. So. Um, I would recommend reaching out to the coaches if you have interest or myself and I can help connect you. Um, in addition to our intercollegiate teams, we also have non-NCAA sports going on at RIT through the club sport level, um, recreational level, and intramural level. So um, maybe Division I hockey is not for you, but there is club hockey and it's a very competitive team as well. Club lacrosse also um, and many other uh, sports that you could be a part of at some level. So um, I just want to give you a lay of the land of the Northeast and especially New York State in terms of colleges and universities. There's over 150 colleges and universities in New York State alone. Um, so there's a lot of choices, especially for you Ontario folks, like really close to home. Um, you know, RIT, for, if you're not familiar, is in Rochester, which is in Western New York, only three hours from Toronto. Um, so very drivable to a lot of these places. Um, and so so it's really nice that you're able to, if, especially if you're in Ontario, easily visit a lot of these in, uh, schools as well. Um, so very, very um, different than the than Canada, really. I mean, there's so many more choices, um, which can make it hard to navigate and confusing and a lot of information. Um, so if I can be helpful for you at all as you're looking at U.S. universities as a starting point, let me know. Uh, so this is a one aerial shot of the university, and it's kind of hard to capture RIT from an aerial view because it's a 1,300-acre campus. It's very large, uh, very modern, uh, but it is a very much a walkable campus. Uh, there's a three-mile or five-kilometer loop around the campus, uh, that so it's all kind of within that for the most part. But in the foreground there, you see a lot of our upper-class housing. Um, so there's tons of housing available both on campus and adjacent to the campus. And uh, the hockey, the arena, Gene Policini Center is right off to the right hand side of this image. Um, so very walkable to your residences and to the academic buildings as well. So in total, almost 17,000 students, which makes RIT one of the largest private universities in the US. Uh, majority undergraduate university, uh, a fairly large international student population diverse campus in terms of ethnicities, racial backgrounds, geographical backgrounds, and we have close to a thousand deaf and hard of hearing students at RIT, which is a really unique aspect of diversity. Um, we also have campuses in Croatia, Kosovo, United Arab Emirates, and China. So there's overseas opportunities built in through an RIT campus experience. As uh, Brian mentioned earlier, the class size is very small. The average is 22 to 23. So that's a big distinguishing factor and the 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio from Canadian universities. Um, even though this is a fairly large student population, it is a small classroom experience, which was one of the benefits of a U.S. Um, university experience. The biggest lecture halls for some of the most common classes max out at like 150 students. So you're not going to find yourself in these three, four, 500 student classes. They just don't exist um, on campus. So as I mentioned before, lots of housing available. 
uh, for students and lots of dining options as well spread across the entire campus. Uh, so over 20 in total, um, lots of special diet um, options too, uh, and many convenience stores and coffee shops. The facilities are really nice in the residence halls in terms of the tunnel system and what's available to you in a very convenient way. Um, and then here's a shot of our main fitness center. This will be open to all students. Um, I know the hockey players have some specific um, athletic facilities available to them closer to the rink. Um, but this is just a small glimpse at a very beautiful um, athletics facility as well as aquatic center uh, on campus and right in the center of campus as well. So academically, RIT is a comp considered a comprehensive university, meaning that there's a wide range of programs available to students. Um, so our biggest areas would be in computing, followed by engineering and engineering technology, art, design, film, and photography, uh, and then health sciences, traditional sciences and mathematics, uh, business, and then social sciences, humanities, communication-based programs, um, as well as many environmental related programs. Um, as Hannah mentioned earlier, you can start out undecided. Uh, we have many exploration programs to allow you to explore during your first year and then make a more informed decision about a major. We also have about 100 minors, so there's different ways to incorporate your various interests into your time at RIT, whether it be through a minor, whether it be through electives, um, or combining something in a bachelor's, master's combination. There's lots of options there as well. So a big part of the culture at RIT is that you're also gaining experience outside of the classroom. Um, so like the University of Waterloo, RIT is a really major co-op university, um, one of the four largest in the US. Um, and we've been very highly recognized for that over the years. So you're not just going to get your education, but also more experience outside of that. For most students, it's in the form of co-op, meaning that it's paid and it's professional level work. We have employer relations with over 2,000 companies worldwide. Your co-ops can be in Canada, they can be in the U.S., or they could be in another country. Um, as a Canadian student, um, if you're not a dual U.S. citizen, and you come here, this is part of your educational experience where you're eligible to work in the US and you're still eligible to work in the US at least for a year after you graduate. STEM majors have up to three years of eligibility after they graduate. So if you're thinking about working in the US, you will have that opportunity um, during your academic program and afterwards, um, which is great. So, with our business students, as an example, they still graduate in four years and do their co-ops in the summertime, either one or two, depending on their preference. And then for engineering and computer science students, as an example, they have a five-year program because they're doing multiple co-ops throughout their time at RIT. Um, they tend to be a combination of the summertime and the fall and the spring. For athletes, um, their co-ops are going to be adjusted to be during the off season wherever possible, or that you're co-oping in Rochester and still available to make your practices and all of your um, games. So um, high placement rate, as you can imagine, because students are graduating with so much experience. Um, the 2021 numbers are even higher than the 2020 numbers, and these are pretty high given it was a pandemic time. Um, so tons of support from our career services office throughout your time at RIT as you're looking for co-ops and full-time jobs. We have amazing career fairs with over 200 employers that come to each of them to meet with you. Um, so you can have face-to-face -face time with them, interview with them right on campus, and you're ultimately in control of your uh, co-op search, which companies you apply to, where they're based, what type of work it is. And if you go to ret.edu slash career info, you can see a lot of specific information by major in terms of average co-op and full-time earnings, what skills and capabilities you'll graduate with, what companies we partner with the most, typical job titles for graduates, and a lot more information there as well. So as I mentioned before, we have overseas campuses. We also support study abroad in a number of other countries through partner universities. And we also support work abroad. So that could be, like I said before, working in Canada or it could be working somewhere else. We help support you through that process. 
All right, so one of the things that we've heard a little bit about from our students is pursuing a master's degree. So RIT has a lot of established programs that are accelerated in nature, meaning you can get your bachelor's and master's in five years sometimes or six years, depending on the combination of programs. So that can be a time saver and a cost saver as you're getting um, more credentialed through your time. We also have some partnership programs with um, Syracuse University College of Law, for example, for a three plus three BSJD if you want to become a lawyer. We do have a uh, upstate medical university program uh, if you want to get your BSMD in eight years. Um, Canadians are eligible and the deadline for grade 12 students is November 15th, so it's coming up very soon if you happen to be in that boat. And we also have partnerships with VCOM um, based out of Erie, Pennsylvania. So lots of different options there. Um, you will be automatically considered for some of these combinations and may receive as a follow-up to your acceptance and conditional admission offer to an accelerated bachelor's master's program, and you, which you could either accept or decline. All right, I want to get next into the admissions process so you have uh, your eyes open as to what to expect on that front. So, you know, you can apply directly to a major. Let's say you definitely know you want game design and development. You definitely want um, to be an exercise science student. You can apply directly to that major and start out in that major from day one. It's not to say that you can't request a change later on, um, but that is how most students apply to RIT, uh, but not all, because like Hannah talked about, there's an exploration option as well that's also fairly popular. So if you're pretty sure you want business or science or something else, you can apply directly to one of those programs and have a lot of support guiding you as you're making those decisions of what to major in. We also have a customizable degree program uh, in the School of Individualized Study as well. Um, this information here is about differential admission, meaning that we will consider your application for admission along with other students who are applying to the same major. So some majors are more competitive than others. We do allow you to list up to three choices of major on your application if you have genuine interest in more than one area. Um, RIT is test optional in terms of the SAT and ACT for all programs, except for that SUNY Upstate Medical University 4 plus 4. That program does require the SAT or ACT. Um, so you can choose on your application if you want to apply without testing, which is about half of our applicants do that, and you still get all the same admission and scholarship consideration. Um, so it's a fairly popular choice. Um, this is a look at our profile um, in terms of accepted students. And just keep in mind that the GPA here is based on the US scale, not on Ontario or other provincial scales um, to give you a ballpark. So if you're an A, B student, typically you're gonna be competitive for most of our majors at RIT. So unlike Canadian universities and British universities, we have holistic admission review, meaning we're looking at you as a complete individual, not just on your marks exclusively. So while your marks are very important and the results of your grades are very important, especially in courses related to the major that you're applying to, um, we're also going to be looking at recommendation letters. We're going to be looking at your activities and your involvement um, in athletics, whether it's athletics or other um, activities or pursuits, uh, performing arts, whatever the case may be, awards you may have received, um, hobbies, all of that will be considered. Um, we do have an essay requirement as part of the application, um, and we are a common application school if you're applying via the Common App. And if you happen to be interested in art, design, or film and animation, which are all Bachelor of Fine Art programs, uh, there is a portfolio requirement, and you can upload your portfolio through SlideRoom. In terms of deadlines, um, we're really in the thick of things right now. Um, so uh, students that know that RIT is their top choice university, they can apply early decision one or two, and many athletes choose one of those options because they have really positive feedback um, from the coaching staff, they may have committed athletically, and then now they want to go through an early admission process. Um, so November 1st was our early decision one deadline, this is for grade 12 students. Early decision two is coming up January 1st, and then regular decision is January 15th. So it is a block review process. So you'll find out in the order, um, depending on which uh, option you select. Uh, and the regular decision notifications would be the last ones to go out. Those go out by mid-March. And unlike Canada, the commitment date in the US is May 1st for regular decision. So um, you, know, you may not have heard back from all your Canadian universities um, so just be in touch with us if you're in a situation like that, and we can guide you appropriately 
um, if you are applying to um, universities across both countries. So RIT will automatically consider you for merit-based scholarship funding. If you're a Division I hockey player, you're also going to be considered for athletic scholarship funding, as we heard about earlier. That's a new thing this for this class that just came in and for upcoming classes, which we're very excited about. Uh, but RIT is one of the few universities in the U.S. that will also consider you for need-based funding, and it's in the form of RIT grant funding. So like a scholarship, it's money you do not need to pay back. Uh, and we have a special Canadian financial aid application on our website. We would also send it to you with your acceptance um, and just ask for you to return that um, to us so we can consider you for need-based funding. Um, other sources that you may want to pursue, depending on what province you're part of, um, you know, an RESP funding, for example, is uh, transferable to the U.S. Uh, OSAP is another example for Ontario students that they're able to apply to their RIT cost of attendance. And uh, we heard from Sarah earlier about her working on campus. Um, you are allowed as a Canadian to work up to 20 hours per week on campus, which can help with some incidental expenses um, along the way, which is nice. And to help build up your resume, perhaps helping you secure your first co-op. Uh, things like that. I want to share a couple of the newer things happening on campus with you. Um, I find them very exciting. I think our students and our coaches do too. Um, and so I wanted you to know about them. So we're in the, the tail end now of constructing what we we're calling the shed. It was a student that named the shed. It's anything but a humble structure that a shed is. It's over a $100 million uh, building that is has multi- um, uses to it. Uh, one of the primary purposes of this facility is uh, to have several maker spaces. So a lot of our competitive racing teams will be using this space. Um, there's going to be a couple dozen classrooms, which is going to be wonderful. And we're also going to be adding to the performing arts uh, venue space on campus with a black box theater and a dance studio. So that will have a soft opening this March or May, I'm sorry and then a full-fledged opening um, in time for the fall 2023 class that's coming in. So very exciting, right in the center of campus. I had a hard hat tour of this uh, last month, and there's actually spectacular views of the Gene Palacini Center, uh, the hockey arena right from this uh, building because of all the glass and how tall it is. Um, some of the other things that are coming up, um, we have a music performance theater that will is scheduled to open in 2024. So if you love musicals, that's what this whole theater is going to specialize in. Uh, we had an opening of a new track and field recently, as well as new softball and baseball fields and a new soccer and lacrosse field that you can see pictured there. Um, the next phase of this will be the uh, construction of an athletic stadium as well. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And our Dubai campus is getting our, um, uh, some new facilities as well. So things happening in Rochester and all around the world for the R for RET. Uh, if you happen to be drivable to Rochester and want to come this Saturday, we do have an open house, which allows for a deep dive into an academic area of interest and as well as campus tours, residence halls, tours, and all of that. Uh, but we'll have more open houses coming up in the spring for accepted students. We have campus tours virtually and in person year round. So feel free to sign up for one of those depending on your schedule. And uh, for grade 9, 10, and 11 students, we will have an introducing RIT program in the springtime as well. But uh, all this can be found on our website. And I wanted to share with you again my contact information. I'm happy to help you at any stage in the process. This can be very daunting, overwhelming at times, confusing, and I'm here to be a resource for you. So please reach out. And that's what I have. So I'm going to turn it back over to Victoria uh, for Q&A. Thank you, Mark, for that presentation. I love that. You're right. That is nothing like a shed, but I get it. You get a lot of work done in there. So, you know, I love that. I love that y'all are continu continuing to grow and develop in Dubai. You say that you have a campus? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, let me ask you, so what other, you know, study abroad opportunities do you have at RIT? Yeah, I'll go first and anyone else is welcome to chime in. So um, we have a goal global organization that supports students that want to study abroad. And you can actually, as a prospective student, search the Go Global website 
And you can search by country or by major, and you can see all the different opportunities. Some of them are summer opportunities or fall or spring opportunities. Some of them are like two or three week experiences. Some you don't have to pay any extra tuition. It's included with your RIT cost of attendance. Um, so you can get a lot of information out there, but there's literally hundreds and hundreds of opportunities. And you know, it's really exciting coming out of the pandemic that they're all gonna be available again, because you know, of course things were a little bit limited the past couple of years. Does anyone have anything to share in terms of someone that you know that studied abroad or if you looked into it at one point or um, anything at all? Okay. Okay, excellent. Well, the student athletes are like, we have a lot going on already, so. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. All right, excellent. We have a question from Janet. Um, and just I just wanna remind everyone, if you have any questions, make sure you write it in the Q&A box. Um, so question from Janet. Several athletes mentioned they weren't quite sure what they would study. How does RIT work with students who may have some preferences but not quite sure, um, such as computer science versus software engineering, electrical engineering? I guess I can talk on that. Um, usually if you come in as an undeclared student, there's um, a seminar that you take with all the other undeclared students um, in the college that you're in. And they pretty much just go through all the programs that are in their college and the opportunities RIT has. Um, it's really good like information and it kind of just lets you explore what kind of possibilities or opportunities that you can do at RIT. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, go ahead, yeah, Sarah. And I can kind of touch on that a little bit as I'm actually business exploration right now. Um, so my first two years, I technically do not have a major, but I knew coming in that I wanted to do something in business. I just didn't know exactly kind of what area yet. So um, after taking like more business courses, like accounting, finance, um, I'm kind of leaning towards finance. So like I technically do not have to clear my major until the end of this year, which is nice. So. And from a prospective student standpoint, I just wanted to offer that we in the admissions office are really here to counsel students. And because RIT, especially, um, you know, Janet, you mentioned computing, um, the portfolio of computing programs at RIT is really uh, amazing. Um, you know, computer engineering, software engineering, cybersecurity, computer science, and then I'm just listing like a few of many, many, many. So we're happy to talk through what the options are, what the differences are what the admission criteria differences are, because there's different admission criteria in some cases, is the computing exploration the best place to start given the students' interests? Um, so we're here, happy to help at the front end um, as well, navigate that. Awesome, I just wanna say, Sarah, I, that's, I did business with a concentration in finance. So, you know, everything's a business, right? <laughs> At the end of the day. All right. Um, well, those were the questions that we had, and we just want to give everyone a, a moment. So Janet said thank you. <laughs> so thank you for answering that question. Just want to know before you get out of here, and this is for everybody, um, you know, what do you love most about RIT? So just take a moment. And whoever wants to go first, you're more than welcome to. I think I can start. Uh, me personally, I, I love that I've been able to meet so many of my best friends for life here. So it's been really great. Like, uh, coach Ellis said earlier, we, we really do a good job of bringing in good people. And like, I think I've got maybe 20, 30, 40 friends for life. So that's been awesome. Thank you for sharing Elijah. Me and my friends still have a uh, group me our group chat so it continues on all right who is up next i think you know again and I, i've been working here for 17 years and uh you know my daughter went to school here too so she actually played with celeste on the championship women's team that we had uh here and uh i, I think the, the co-op program is such a huge part of the education uh, my daughter actually started in business and then after one year moved into the uh, packaging pro program and is now a packaging engineer and uh, works for 3M out in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota and just 
got an outstanding degree and uh, uh, wasn't even really looking for a job, to be honest, when she graduated from college. Uh, she, she, uh, there was, I think, a job fair at RIT and uh, 3M and Jack Daniels were two of the companies that she recognized and said, oh, geez, so you know, see if I can get an interview with them and uh, because she was planning on going over to Europe to travel. And uh, so she went and did the interview on campus. The next thing you know, they both uh, flew her out to interview on site. And the next thing you know, she had two job offers. And uh, and she said, geez, dad, what do I do? I said, well, I said, you might want to take one of those offers and you'll earn enough money that you'll have plenty of, plenty of money to travel with. So, uh, but uh, yeah, the co-op program is, you know, really did her, uh, it was a great benefit for her. She did 20 straight weeks of co-op, 10 one, one summer and 10 one semester. And uh, I think that's what put her over the top when she uh, went out to look for a job. Awesome. And I, I just have a quick question. What are those career fairs like that y'all have there? I mean, I'm a little jealous. We didn't have companies like that. So Mark, can you tell us just a little more about the, the career fairs that y'all have? Yeah, I mean, we host them in our field house, which seats 8,000 people to give you kind of a visual of how big this facility is. And they each have their own booth. Um, a lot of them will come a day or two before and do information sessions about their companies. Um, they'll stay a day or two after and interview students, but um, students come dressed to the nines and they go around, they target, they know, they research first which companies they want to talk to, you know, they wait for their turn, they give their, their pitch and hope that they make a connection and make it to the next uh, round of consideration. So, you know, some of the younger students will do it as practice even so that when it's, you know, the next year comes around, they feel more confident, more comfortable, prepared. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they have practice going through a semi-professional job search, you know, as, you know, sophomores in college. And so it, it really is a powerful learning opportunity. Um, but RIT does an amazing job at the event aspect of it too. Love that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, are you ready, Mark? Now that you're- I'm ready. You, are I'm you? ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So I, I came to RIT from a very small town that was not diverse and I was very shy, um, if you can believe that. And um, so I met people from all over the world as a student, which was like amazing, right? You know, right down the hall, there's like several different countries represented like that. That was so powerful to me as a person. And then, you know, I had a professor walk into class one day, six months before graduation. I didn't have a job. And he said, hey, I'm consulting with a company in Germany. Does anyone want to apply for their opening? And I did. And I got the job. Um, and so I, you know, right after graduation, moved to Germany. I didn't know a lick of German, but I had to learn it real fast. Um, so I got to experience another culture. I'd never been, you know, outside of North America before. And I lived there for two years. And that was a life altering experience that I can attribute to RIT and the connections there, you know. So you like, like Brian said, I mean, sometimes you have these job offers way before you graduate and you have a lot of great choices. Um, so. That's nice. How much German you still got the language? It's it's been over twenty years, but I still have I still yeah. have. I was <laughs> okay. I was working in German, believe it or not. It took a few months to get there, but very nice. That's cool. That's very cool. All right, next, who we got? Coming off mute. I and then there were three. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I would just say the people I met, like Elijah said, um, the experiences I've had um, academically uh, with my friends and then also playing hockey here. Um, and then that also how much I've grown as a student, as an athlete, and as a person. I've definitely, I can definitely say I've grown a lot in the last four years. Um, and it's been a great experience that, and I'll bring all these memories with me for my entire life. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Sarah, I'm going to call you and we'll let coach, coach finish this out. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite part is just the community. Um, like everybody loves the sports on campus. Like I even follow the other sports on campus. And I know like there's kids in my class that always come up to us and say like, Hey, nice game this weekend and things like that. And I just think everybody's so welcoming and, and so inviting, which I think is nice. Thank you. 
And then I will say, and I always say this answer is like, you can come to RIT and you can be anyone that you want to be and you can succeed at it. So, and you'll have a community all behind you wanting to do that. So I'm like, if you want to be a hockey player and a stud hockey player, and you want to be a stud juggling captain of the juggling team and the business student, nobody's going to blink an eye. They're going to give you like high fives and, and raise you up. Um, which I think is really, really unique to RIT that you can do that or do some version of that. Thank you, Coach. So Mark, Hannah, Sarah, Coach Les, Coach Brian, Elijah, thank you uh, for bringing RIT today. Y'all always just bring so much just love and community and just new development, just everything you want, right? <laughs> so we just love that. So Thank you everyone um, for joining us today via Zoom and live stream. Thank you for always coming out and supporting and joining the College Tracker Show. I'm Victoria Allen and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Good night. Bye, Bye. everybody.